Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Concerned. So now we are going to talk about pharynx and esophagus. So pharynx is that part which actually helps to swallow the food. So we will talk about pharynx and esophagus which is the food pipe. So let us now talk about pharynx. What, it, what is it? It is a common passage for food and air. Now here you have to understand few things. Now as I said, till now we saw that the intake of food happens through the mouth. And then the food gets crushed down and all those things happen here in the oral cavity. Right? And then the food goes down and it is like swallowed. And then it has to enter the esophagus. Now the esophagus starts from here basically. So this portion is nothing but the pharynx. And this pharynx is a common passage for food as well as air. So food is coming through your mouth, that is the oral cavity, and air is coming through the nostrils. So when we breathe in, we take in air through the nostrils, and then the air enter, enters the nasal cavity, and from the nasal cavity, it again comes to the pharynx. So this is air and this is food. So we can say that pharynx is a common passage for both food and air. Now does that mean that both food and air will pass through the esophagus? No. This is the esophagus which is also known as the food pipe and there is a separate windpipe which is called the trachea and this is the windpipe. So here you can see the green colored structure that is the windpipe. Now food and air both comes together till this point and after that air goes in through the windpipe and food continues to move along the food pipe. So that is how the passage of food and air happens through pharynx. So it connects to both food pipe as well as the wind pipe and food pipe is nothing but the esophagus. So that also we will discuss very soon. If you talk about the process of digestion then no digestion happens in pharynx. So pharynx is just a space which has to be crossed or which has to be passed by the food material to reach the esophagus and from esophagus it will reach the stomach but no actual digestion or no breaking down of complex to simpler uh, particles no such process actually happens in pharynx now if you talk about the structure of pharynx we need we will have to discuss quite a few things so let us quickly look at the different parts of pharynx now there are three parts of pharynx, nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. Now what are these three parts? Nasopharynx, the term comes from the nasal cavity. As I said, the pharynx, this portion of the pharynx which is related or which is directly linked to the nasal cavity that is called the nasopharynx. This portion of the pharynx which is linked with the oral cavity that is known as the oropharynx and this below portion of the pharynx which is linked with larynx larynx is nothing but the voice box which is present somewhere here that is the throat so that is known as laryngopharynx so these are the three parts of pharynx so when you talk about nasopharynx it is connected or it joins with the nasal cavity. So the air comes and it meets the nasopharynx. If you talk about the oropharynx, it is associated with the oral cavity. And if you talk about laryngopharynx, it, it is below the oropharynx and it connects throat to esophagus. So pharynx as such, it is going to connect the throat to the esophagus. So that is the purpose of pharynx. Now here in the windpipe, here you have a flap kind of a structure, a cartilaginous flap. So whenever the food and the air comes in here, this flap will open up only for air to enter into the trachea. So this flap is known as epiglottis. So epiglottis acts as a gate uh, or a gatekeeper which allows only air to pass through the windpipe and it does not allow food to pass through the windpipe. If by mistake any food particle enters into the windpipe, it can cause immediate suffocation and can result in death. So these are the three different parts of 
pharynx. Now this pharynx just acts as something which allows food to reach the food pipe. Now from the pharynx the food reaches into the esophagus that is the food pipe. So here I have actually shown how the digest this we, we don't talk about the windpipe that is the trachea and the lungs uh, in digestive system but I have shown this figure just to tell you that this is how both the things are located inside our body the windpipe and the food pipe they are located quite close to each other just that the windpipe and the respective lungs performs the function of the respiratory system and the food pipe and the respective organs like stomach and intestine they together form the digestive system so here this blue colored highlighted tube is the esophagus which we are going to talk about now. So esophagus is the food pipe. It helps in the downward movement of food. No digestion happens here as well. As I said, pharynx and esophagus, they just act as paths or road you can say they are just a path to carry the food from one place to another so a little bit of digestion activity had taken place in the oral cavity and now the food needs to be carried to the stomach and this is the stomach so who will carry the food from oral cavity to the stomach so for that purpose we have the pharynx which will facilitate the swallowing part and then we have the esophagus that is the food pipe it is a long vertical pipe through which the food will move downward now the question is it is just a pipe correct so what actually regulates the movement of food in the downward direction i mean if you just say that okay it is happening only by gravity then whatever food will come in that bolus you remember the ball or the mass of all the food particles so that will just just immediately it will fall into the stomach so it just, is it like that that like suddenly a lot of food is getting into the stomach and then for a long time there is no food coming into the stomach so how is that movement regulated in the esophagus how is the food moving through the food pipe or the esophagus okay so we will spend some time understanding that as well that what causes the food to move in the downward direction within the tube like esophagus also this tube passes posteriorly through the neck thorax and the diaphragm as you can see in the picture on the anterior side you can actually see the ribs and the windpipe is there behind the windpipe is the food pipe so that is how it is located now let us look at the role of pharynx and esophagus in the process of digestion as i said just now that the movement of food how it happens we'll discuss that here now bolus that is the mass of I mean a ball like structure which is nothing but mass of all the food material which you have taken in. So that bolus moves into the pharynx and then esophagus by the process of swallowing. So when we swallow it actually passes through pharynx and then gets into the food pipe. Now what happens in the food pipe? Peristalsis pushes the food downward. So this is a new term for you. What is peristalsis? So it is nothing but successive waves of muscular contractions. Now if you look at the structure of this food pipe closely, you will actually see that the walls of the food pipe has some muscles. So a muscular layer is present in the uh, epithelial layers of the uh, esophagus and these muscles contract and expand and the contraction and expansion of these muscles actually pushes the food downward now you might be thinking if the food cannot move on its own how can the muscular movement make the food move you might ask that now let us forget about what we are discussing let us forget about esophagus just think of a very common example let us suppose you take a piece of paper and you make a boat with that piece of paper so you have a paper boat in your hand you take that boat and put it on flowing water what happens does the paper boat remain stationary because even the paper boat cannot move on its own but when you keep it on flowing water the boat tends to move with the waves that is because the waves are moving and since you have kept the boat on top of that so it is also moving along with the wave 
So similar is the case here. In this case also, this is your food pipe. And the food pipe has muscles in the outside. As a result, the food pipe is capable of contraction and expansion. So they are like waves again. So there are waves taking place in the muscles which are present in the layers of the food pipe. As a result, the food or the bolus which is present, it tends to move with the waves. So you can see it once again. This is the bolus, the blue colored thing and it is moving down the waves of the food pipe. So this uh, waves of muscular contractions is known as peristalsis. So how can you define peristalsis? It is nothing but successive waves of muscular contractions. Now these muscular contractions are present throughout all the organs of the digestive system whether you talk about the esophagus or the stomach or the intestine. So all of them have these kind of muscular movements which enables the food to keep moving and that is why the food is not static anywhere. It keeps moving from one part of the alimentary canal to the other and that is how this entire process keeps happening. The gastroesophageal sphincter controls the passage of food from esophagus to stomach. So this is another important part. The gastroesophageal sphincter. Now here at the opening between the stomach and the esophagus. Here you have a sphincter which is known as gastro esophageal sphincter. What does a sphincter do? A sphincter is nothing but uh, it is like a, it is a muscular structure basically and it is like a gate so when the gate is closed nothing can pass from one side to the other so here also if the sphincter remains closed it is a valve kind of a structure so if it is closed the food cannot pass from esophagus to the stomach but if it is open then food can pass into the stomach now why do we have a sphincter in order to regulate the amount of food coming into the stomach now this stomach as such we'll talk about stomach in the next section but just to tell you stomach is an organ which is kind of elastic in nature so it can expand when a lot of food comes into the stomach it can expand but again it also has a limitation you ju just cannot keep on putting food into the stomach so there has to be a limitation and in order to put that limit you have this sphincter the sphincter will regulate the amount of food which is moving from the esophagus into the stomach and this sphincter is called the gastroesophageal sphincter so this is how pharynx and esophagus play their respective roles in the process of digestion. When I say the process, I'm talking about the entire digestive process. I'm not talking about the real digestion. Real digestion is breaking down of complex to simpler substances. So in the, that real digestion, uh, pharynx and esophagus do not do do not play any role but in the process overall digestive system if there is no pharynx or if there is no esophagus the process cannot take place that's because the food will not be able to reach from oral cavity to the stomach so that means they play an indirect role but they do not actively participate in the digestion process thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.